Sponsored by Surfshark. In the rarefied, near $2,000 air of the ultra-high-end U.S. foldable market, Americans have only ever had two options, the super-skinny Samsung Galaxy or the pudgy, peculiar Google Pixel. Well, today, into that obvious opening comes the most compelling device from OnePlus I've ever covered. A large format foldable that rides like a regular phone when it's closed, with a refreshing take on multitasking when it's open, and a camera that finally lives up to its colossal casing. I'm Michael Fisher, and I've been daily driving a Galaxy Fold since the first Galaxy Fold. But I think the OnePlus Open might just be my next phone. Now, I'm the kind of guy who appreciates rich mahogany and leather-bound books, so... While the phone is also available in emerald dusk, that one comes with a more conventional glass back. Give me the supple warmth of a pleather backplate any day. It takes abuse better, and it evokes a mobile moleskin without the need of a case. Though you'll be happy to know a case does come in the box, along with a fast charger. More on that later. As someone who's been carrying an open review device for three weeks, let me tell you, its on-screen appearance is deceptive. The combination of slab-like sides and that huge camera collective makes the thing look titanic. And it is also a little awkward to hold, thanks to those cameras, which force your grip lower on the casing. But remember all the hinge details I showed you in my previous video? Those ultralight alloys and design refinements? Well, they've really paid off. Every time I pick up the Open, I'm struck by how light it is. Lighter than the Galaxy Fold 5, and much lighter than the Pixel Fold. So when I stick it in my pocket, it feels like a conventional phone instead of a foldable. And when I deploy it in tablet mode, I can wield it one-handed for much longer. The hinge action is very satisfying too. There's enough friction to pose it in mini laptop mode, and when you deploy it all the way, it pops into place with an authoritative snap. As with its Oppo siblings, the crease is still visible if you look for it. But next to the Samsung and Google competition, this screen looks and feels substantially flatter. The Open does take a backseat in terms of water resistance, managing an IPX4 rating where Galaxy and Pixel boast IPX8. But having watched the kind of bath IPX4 demands on my visit to Shenzhen, I'm prepared to call that a minor hit at this point. It's more than enough to weather whatever weather you happen to run into. Factor in those lovely symmetrical bezels, both inside and out, the snappy and sporty haptics, and that idiot-proof alert slider that lets me click into silent mode when I can't bear to hear even one more notification noise. And is there anything this hardware gets wrong? Well, yes, two big things, though the first might be due to pre-production hardware. When we took our first batch of test units outside at the OnePlus Media Briefing, some units, mine included, developed foggy condensation inside their camera modules. The affected devices were quickly swapped out, and I haven't seen it recur on my replacement device, but that was a disconcerting development to start with. The other issue is baked right into the phone's design, but I'm having too much fun talking about the wins right now, so let's pocket that problem for a second and speak to the software. I've long considered Samsung the folding phone of choice for utility, thanks to its robust multi-window options. But over the past two years, Oppo has quietly built up a stable of software that, thanks to the merger of its operations with OnePlus, can now come out into the open. Oxygen OS is right at home on a foldable. Swipe up into the switcher on the cover screen and you get a thumb-friendly ribbon on the bottom to quickly scrub to the app you're looking for. Do the same thing on the main screen and you get a double wide column of cards, a very smart use of all this real estate. If you're in one app and want to bring another side by side, a two finger swipe from the top parts the waters so you can do that. Samsung offers something similar if you want to swipe in from the side, but I find this much more intuitive. These are features pioneered by Oppo, but OnePlus now takes it a step further. It's not just that you can add a third app to the screen, it's the way OnePlus arranges them. You can stack all three side by side. 
The first time I did this, my mind immediately went to covering an event on multiple social networks. This almost felt like a mini tweet deck of sorts. Or you can run two apps side by side and drop a third in full screen mode below them. I find this helpful for multi-column apps like Evernote that don't always behave when sharing screen space with others. OnePlus calls this approach the open canvas, and I enjoy juggling apps like this much more than I do with floating windows. Those are available too, though, in a dizzying array of options for those who prefer their phone to act more like a desktop. And those same people also have the option of a taskbar if they want, complete with a folder that lets you drag and drop recent files directly into apps that support it. There's even good news if you're a one app at a time kind of person. Just like on Samsung's foldables, the Open's 7.8 inch display is ever so slightly taller than it is wide which means apps open in the orientation you expect. No pillar boxed pixel fold foibles here. But like that pixel fold, the OnePlus Open is a first generation product, which means there are some bugs. The taskbar sometimes overlaps apps that have trouble with different display dimensions, like Telegram, and it's not always clear where to press and hold to make it disappear. Also, the Open Canvas takes some getting used to. My instinct is always to swipe smoothly between the different apps, but no, you need to tap your way across the canvas. Creating shortcuts to app groups doesn't always work, and despite OnePlus being targeted partially at US buyers, this Oxygen OS flavor of Android still bears nagging notifications about apps draining your battery that you can't mute, interface elements copied directly from iOS, and review samples sent out without the ability to test Google Pay. Yes, that's a common problem with many manufacturers and it's corrected by the time the things hit the market, but to be honest, this shouldn't be common. Review devices should arrive ready to be reviewed. Don't know how many times I can say it. One of the things to keep an eye on when a company breaks into a new category is how well it ports over the fundamentals of a conventional phone to a new, more challenging form factor. Well, I'm happy to say that OnePlus's 10 years of experience are open for all to see here. First and foremost, the biggest thing Google whiffed on with Pixel Fold was delivering a display that's easily visible outdoors. And that's something OnePlus got right, both inside and out, thanks to its Oppo experience. OnePlus also booked us a boat on the New York City briefing day so we could test the Open's camera, but I found it to be an even better venue for testing the voice calling. My girlfriend said that the phone's noise cancellation was good enough to overcome both the loud music and a nearby ventilator. About the only complaint I have here is that I'd like the speakerphone to be louder during calls. I get real tired of spamming that volume rocker, only to find it's already maxed out. I had no complaints about reception on T-Mobile's network, nor did the phone ever have trouble staying tethered to the OnePlus Buds, nor did I ever run into a performance bottleneck. OnePlus is well known for appealing to the gigabyte and gigahertz geeks, and the Open is as overpowered as you'd expect in this arena. Well, its battery packs enough staying power to last me through the whole day, every day. So does it really matter that it doesn't have wireless charging? Yeah. Yes, it does. Look, if you don't care about wireless charging, fine. But the fact of the matter is that almost every flagship phone in the West has it which means it's highly likely that people switching to the OnePlus Open have at least one charging pad, if not more, at home. And dropping your very expensive phone on one of them only to be rejected? Frankly, it sucks. This was already backward when I complained about it in my OnePlus 11 review, and eight months later, it's only more puzzling, since the Qi 2 charging standard is about to bring Apple MagSafe-style charging to Android phones. OnePlus says it ditched wireless because of weight and thickness, to which I and my Motorola Razr Plus say, poppycock. OnePlus also always rolls out the old chestnut that fast charging is more important than wireless charging. And to be fair, this phone does charge incredibly quickly. But don't fall for that because it's a false choice. The reality is we can have both. And in fact, we have had both before. At one time, OnePlus itself sold the fastest wireless charging phone and dock combination in America. 
Whew. Well, I'm glad I got that out of my system because just like with that Oppo Find N3 Flip review from last week, I get to end on a high note. Because just like with the Find N3 Flip, this camera is an unexpected delight. As I've said before, there's not much more hay I can make from side-by-side -side photo layouts from smartphone cameras. As technically impressive as OnePlus's pixel-stacked Sony sensor might be, it's pretty easy to get what you need from any of the big three foldables in the States. But punch in with that telephoto, and the differences, especially at night, are so dramatic that I, I just can't not mention them. That big half-inch sensor on the OnePlus telephoto gives its 3x optics a 6x reach through cropping, and just look at the results. It may not have Google's smarts, I know I'm gonna miss Magic Eraser, or Samsung's full feature set, but I do have the most fun with the Open. I'll run a few more samples for you, enjoy these, and then we'll come back to price and availability when we close out. OnePlus promises to support the Open with five years of security updates and four years of Android platform upgrades. Let's hope it's already far along on Android 14, since the Pixel Fold is already there. Of more interest to me is how it will support buyers in terms of service and repair, still a major consideration with foldables, no matter how rigorously they're tested. Finally, how do you buy one in the States? Well, you won't be able to get it in carrier stores, which is a shame. It will be at bestbuy.com and Amazon, but if you buy from oneplus.com, and, and no, I'm not about to pitch you an affiliate link, don't worry, there is a compelling trade-in offer. OnePlus will take at least $200 off if you trade in any phone in any condition. Now, this is a little confusing, so listen, you can get more than $200 back if you trade in a modern phone in good condition, but if you send in any phone at all, you're going to get at least $200 back. That means the OnePlus Open, whose retail price is about $1,700, effectively becomes the $1,500 foldable I have long expected the company would enter the segment with. I've said before that I think large format foldables should be cheaper than this by now, but they're not. Samsung and Google are still sticking with an $1,800 sticker price. And there are very good reasons to go with either of those instead of the OnePlus. The Galaxy has more features like a stylus and Samsung DeX. The Pixel has value adds you can't find on any other phone, and each offers a more complete product ecosystem, not to mention wireless charging. But the Galaxy is too skinny for some, and the Pixel too heavy for most. The OnePlus Open feels like a regular phone that just happens to become a tablet, with software that pushes folding phones forward and a camera that pushes past the competition. If OnePlus decides to stick with foldables, and all indications are that it will, this could finally become the competition to kick a seemingly complacent Samsung back into gear. If you're tired of hearing about Surfshark, I get it. After all, the company has been my sponsor for four years. But if you think about it, that's a good thing. It means Surfshark has done its job of keeping me and its customers safe while browsing the web all over the world. You also might have noticed that I haven't taken a sponsorship from any other VPN company since I started. And that's not because I can't. 
it's because I haven't felt the need to use anyone but Surfshark. In addition to securing my connection on Wi-Fi networks all around the world, it also guarantees I can still access media and services that might otherwise be restricted by the country I'm browsing from. If that sounds useful to you, get Surfshark at the link in the description and use code Mr. Mobile for 83% off and three extra months free. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to learn more about the OnePlus Open, check out my exclusive look inside the phone and the machines doing their best to break it right here on Mr. Mobile. And subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. This review was produced following three weeks with a review sample provided by OnePlus, which also brought me, along with a bunch of other media, out into New York Harbor for a photo sample boat ride. Meals and drinks were provided. However, as always, OnePlus had no editorial input, copy approval rights, not even an early preview of this content, and it provided no compensation for its creation. Until next time, from Michael Fisher, aka Captain Two Phones on Threads, thanks for watching. And stay mobile, my friends.